Hello friends, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to explain the cache me data available in WSO2's Enterprise Integrator. As you know, caching is a pretty common requirement in today's IT world. It's one of the de facto uh, features expected from almost all software products these days. So what is actually caching and how does it help, right? So to give you an example, I'll, I'll show you an integration scenario wherein we have a source system and that invokes a backend endpoint through an enterprise service bus. ESB just proxies the request and we hit the backend endpoint, retrieves the information and send it back. But what if uh, the information is not changing that frequently? Let's say uh, the information that we are trying to fetch changes only once or twice in a day, whereas uh, the number of requests for that particular data is in uh, thousands, right? So in that case, it's quite unnecessary to go back to the actual source of data to fetch it again and again. Instead, we can cache that information, rather store that information in memory in the ESB layer or in the integration layer, and then send the information back to the, the service invoker from here itself. So that the advantage is we are saving this call over the network. Some of the common examples where we can apply caching is uh, to fetch information that's not frequently changed. So an example could be a lookup data, like it could be um, something like country codes, right? So they are mostly static in nature. It changes only once in a while. So we need not actually go and hit the database to get that information. Instead, we hit once and store the information in memory and serve the service invoker from that memory. So that, that's cache. Another use case that I can think of is uh, let's say we have a backend endpoint which is protected by OAuth, right? As you know, in OAuth, we need an access token to invoke the service. So the first step in OAuth is to get an access token by passing the client ID and client secret. And then once the token is returned by the authorization server, it has a light time to it. Usually it is in like 30 minutes or one hour. And I've seen even cases where the lifespan is six hours. So for the next six hours, I can use the same access token to consume the backend service. I can save the information in a cache and then retrieve that access token from the cache for any subsequent backend calls. Uh, to explain the caching support or rather the cache mediator in WSO2, I'll, I'll create a sample API and then show you how it works. Let's go to the integration studio. I'm at the integration studio now. now let's start by creating a sample project. So I'm going to create a project, right click a new and then other. I'm going to create a Maven multi-module project as usual. So uh, here I have to give a name for the project. So I'm following my same uh, naming convention. So I'm, I'm, I'm giving uh, sample seven as a name of the project. Click on finish to complete the Maven multi-module project. Next step is to create an ESB project. I'm clicking on sample seven project, right click new and then select ESB config project. Click next, select the default option and then click next. And I'm gonna give sample seven underscore ESB as the name of my ESB project. Click on next. Now here I have to link uh, my ESB project to the parent. So I'm linking it to my sample seven project and then clicking on finish to complete the ESB project. So now we have the default folders created as part of the ESB config project. So in, in this uh, particular video, I'll be creating a sample API that invokes a backend endpoint and retrieves a trace ID. The backend endpoint actually returns a new trace ID for every request. So I'll show you that first. And after that, let's implement caching and see that we are not actually hitting the backend endpoint to retrieve that uh, information. Instead, uh, we'll read the data from the cache and send it back to the consumer. So I'm creating a sample API. Click on API, click on new and then rest API, click on next. And I'm gonna give sample seven API as the name of my API. And I'm leaving the same in the context as well. So slash sample seven API as the context. Click on finish. Now I'm gonna just uh, use a send mediator and then I'm going to use an HTTP address endpoint. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to use an address endpoint. Here the format, uh, I leave it as is. 
and the URL is going to be http colon http bin dot org slash get so in the response I'll have a send mediator to send the response back and before the send mediator I'll have a payload factory mediator to actually read a particular trace ID so I'm, I'm going to configure the payload factory mediator as going to be JSON response and then I'll uh, configure my response response payload is going to be trace ID I'll, I'll just have one field and then here I'm going to leave it as dollar one let's have the configuration for dollar one in the argument section so in the argument section I'm going to add argument uh, so argument type is going to be an expression and then uh, the evaluator is going to be JSON and here I'll choose expression it's going to be I'm going to use the J JSON eval uh, function JSON hyphen eval and then it's going to be dollar dot headers dot x hyphen amzn amazon trace id so this is the value that I'm going to fetch now I'll show you how I'm getting this value. Uh, if you look at here, this is my back and endpoint, HTTP bin.org slash get. Every time I invoke this endpoint, it gives me a different trace ID. If you observe, if I click again, see every time it is giving me a different uh, trace ID. So I'm gonna use this value and this is what is gonna be returned in my sample API. So I'm clicking on okay to complete this. Click on finish to save and then I'm saving the API. The API is done. Now this is the default API. And then uh, once this is tested, I'll show you how to implement cache on top of this, right? So I'm creating a car file to deploy this project. So clicking on new other, and then I'm selecting composite application project. I'm gonna name uh, the composite pro application project as sample seven underscore ESB. I'm sorry. This should be car. I'm going to select the sample seven project. Click on next, link it to the parent. I'm going to select sample seven as uh, this is the root Maven multi-module project. Click on finish. Now let's deploy this car file and see it in action. To deploy this, I'm right clicking on the local instance of WSO2 Enterprise Integrator. Click on add and remove just double click on the sample 7 card file and finish from uh, the console here uh, you can know the status of the deployment it says it is successfully deployed let's log into the admin console to see the status of deployment i'm using the default username and password admin and admin and let's click on the apis uh, i'll have to go to the next page click on page 2 sample 7 yeah so this is going to be the sample 7 api I'm just copying the URL and pasting it in a new tab. Click on enter. Uh, you can see a trace ID. Now, where every time you hit the um, or refresh the page, you can see that a new trace ID is uh, returned, right? Now, what we're gonna do is, we'll add the cache mediator and we'll save this trace ID into the cache. And then we'll configure the cache expiry for 10 seconds. So within that 10 seconds, any request that you make to WSO2 will return the same trace ID. Let's see that. So let's go back to uh, Integration Studio. To add the cache mediator, take out the cache mediator from the palette. So this is the cache. I'm just dragging that uh, to my flow. I'm going to the properties tab. I'm selecting a default implementation for uh, the cache mediator. Here the cache type, this is a very important field. So there are two values for the cache type. One is a finder and the second one is a collector. A finder type is actually used to read data from the cache. Whereas a collector is used to uh, put data or to add data into the cache. In our API, the first thing we should check should be uh, to see whether we have data in cache. So I'm gonna use a finder, right? So in cases where we don't have data, we'll go and fetch the data from the backend endpoint. And while returning, I'll have a cache mediator configured with collector uh, cache type so that I'll add 
data into the cache. So I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Now, so a first thing, cache type, I've, I've set it to finder. The next thing is cache timeout. Timeout uh, by default it is 120 seconds. That's too long. I'm going to keep it for 10 seconds just for the demo purpose. Now this field message uh, size, this determines how much data cache should hold. So this value is pretty much good for us. It's 2000 bytes. Now this is another one that indicates the maximum entry count, how many records that cache uh, can hold. On cache hit indicates if the cache has hit and if you find the data, then what, what are we supposed to do? So we can, uh, we can actually uh, configure a sequence name here from the registry and then give a um, sequence name so that um, whatever set of actions that you need to take once a cache has hit, you can perform that here. Or you can leave it to anonymous. I'm going to use anonymous here, but I'll add certain mediators inside. So the next step is a cache protocol type. At the moment, only the HTTP is uh, are the only one supported. Then cache protocol methods. What are the different methods that should be supported? I'm, I'm leaving it to the defaults. So it's going to be hash. If there is any headers to exclude, then we can mention that here. I think it's a comma separated value. So I'm, I'm going to leave the remaining fields um, default. And for this particular demo, that is uh, pretty much uh, enough. The next step is, as I mentioned before, once a cache has hit, what are we supposed to do? So the sequence type, I'm leaving it to anonymous. And then I'm going to add mediators inside the cache to actually fetch the trace ID. The first thing is I'm, I'm going to use a payload factory mediator. I'm copying a payload factory mediator from here. And then I'm going to use the same, same uh, JSON response. So that's going to be a trace ID, trace ID. And then I'll have an argument. So I'm going to give $1. I'll, let's configure $1 in the argument section. Click on the plus sign and add a new element. And there's going to be an expression. Argument type is going to be an expression. And the evaluator is going to, be, going to be JSON. In the argument expression tab, I'm selecting expressions. I'm going to use JSON eval function, JSON eval. And then dollar, that represents the body, dot headers. Okay. And finish. So once a cache has hit, I'm going to uh, get the trace ID from the cache and then return from here itself. So I'm going to use a response med respond mediator. Not proper, yeah. Okay. Now the cache configuration on the in sequence part is completed. Now we have to configure the out sequence part. To configure the out sequence part, I have to use another cache mediator. I'm just copying the cache mediator and uh, copying to the out sequence as a first element. Now here I'm, I'll configure the cache type as a collector. I leave all, I mean, there's nothing else to configure. So when we configure cache, uh, cache mediator in collector mode, whatever data comes in, it just caches it, right? So this completes our configuration of cache. Now let's deploy this and see it in action. I'm redeploying the sample seven car file. As you can see here, the deployment is successfully completed. I'm going back to the tab and I'm going to reload this page. Now you can see I got an ID 0A98. If I refresh, I'll get the same ID because the data is now being read from cache. But after 10 seconds, now you can see the value changed. After 10 seconds, the cache will expire and then we'll go back to the back and end point and retrieve a new value. See, again, the value changed. So this is how the cache works. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I hope you understood how to uh, configure a cache mediator in uh, Enterprise Integrator. If you liked or disliked this video, uh, please use the like or dislike button or the comment section or the video to let me know about how you felt. If you like the content being published in this channel, please subscribe and then hit the notification button so that the new contents that are published here will reach you as a notification so, so that you need not search for it. You know, it saves a lot of time, isn't it? Yeah, I leave it to you guys. So thank you so much for watching, uh, happy learning and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.